to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a great show for you today. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is the last day of May, May 31st, and we are going to cover today. We're going to get into a little bit of the SEC spring meetings, a ton of just kind of grab bag kind of of news that came out of there that I definitely want to cover with you all, especially some stuff around Florida State and Clemson. That is very, very interesting. Then we'll get into a little bit of a debate that's going around right now. What is good enough to get into the playoff this year? Is it 9-3? and three? Is it 10-2? and two? Is it 8-4 and four for some teams? So we'll find out what that looks like. Then we have a, a new thing that might be coming to college football, which is sponsorships on the field, on jerseys possibly. So definitely something that is a little bit of a double-edged sword when you look at the future of college football. Then we have have a couple of rescheduling things a couple of big time rivalries have been moved uh days have been moved times so definitely want to break down all of that for you guys and then we'll get into what we usually do to end out the week a little update on what college football 25 is looking like today is the day that we get tons of gameplay and more in uh in-depth view of what the game is going to look like but for the time being we just have to speculate just a little bit longer but Before we jump in, I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show, and the best way for you all to get your question on the screen, we can have a fun back and forth here, is to use the tip and donation link at the bottom of the screen, gsmcpodcast.net. It's a huge help not only to us here at the network, but to you all. You get to have kind of a fun, interactive experience here, and I think that's always fun for the both of us. So, But let's jump right in, and let's talk about the SEC spring meetings, there was tons of stuff coming out of Destin this week, and it was really hard to keep track of it all. You know, there are tons of coaches speaking on different issues, the Jaden Rashada case, the house settlement, um, the allocation for the house settlement, possible realignment, all of this stuff was discussed. So I kind of want to get into what was going on during uh, this week at Destin and kind of go a little bit rapid fire, then throughout probably next week, we'll get a little bit deeper into these topics as we go. But one of the big things that did happen while we were there Brett McMurphy, one of the big-time reporters in college football, was on the Paul Feinbaum show and said the SEC has no interest in adding Clemson or Florida State. Uh, It sounds like Florida State very much wants in on the SEC, but uh, that doesn't sound like something that is going to come to fruition for them, at least not as of right now. Um, Florida also weighed in on this. They said there's really nothing that they can do individually to stop Florida State from joining the league. It requires a uh, three-fourths majority, and as we all saw, um, only a couple of years ago, A&M didn't want Texas in, and that didn't necessarily work out because a lot of other teams did. So it could be that you know this shifts over time, but it is very interesting with the SEC not necessarily being as interested in Florida State as you would think. So that's going to be a huge topic of conversation. I think when you look at Florida State right now, they're going to get out of the ACC. Um, They're pushing as hard as they can. They're making as many arguments as they can to find their way out of that conference. Now, the bigger question is, once you get past that, is where are you going to go? Um, Because I know there have been a lot of conference realignment in the past, but for the most part, a lot of those were calculated decisions. Um, There were a couple, you know, Utah, which we'll talk about actually a little bit later in here, um, is one of the only few that did it without any landing, spo- uh, landing point actually in place, or at least not the one that they wanted, I guess, is probably the better way to put that. So Florida State is in a situation where you want to be in the SEC. Let's just say, for argument's sake, they absolutely do not want you, and you're not going to get into the SEC. You could look up at the Big Ten, but they have a very strict requirement, whereas if you're not an AAU school, which is essentially a research level type school, it's a certain distinction among academics, you usually don't get a look from the Big Ten. Now, Nebraska is not an AAU school, but they were when they joined the league back in 2010, 2011, I think. So definitely a little bit of a different circumstance now, but Florida State is one of those uh, interesting situations where I'm not necessarily super surprised that people are not super interested in them, Um, especially the uh, SEC. I felt like a lot of last year, especially when the playoff came out and all of that stuff was kind of the fallout of all of that stuff was happening, they were going after the SEC. They were saying that it's unfair that they get all this preferential treatment that Alabama didn't deserve to be in. And if you're going to attack Alabama, you're attacking the SEC. And I, I don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily surprise me that the people up top at the SEC are not necessarily too keen on adding Florida State. And that begs the question of where do you end up? If the AAU moniker is so important to the Big Ten, if you really cannot get into the SEC, 
you might just have to go to the Big 12 uh, and kind of figure it out from there, which is not the ideal situation by any means. And it goes to show you, just like the portal, as we've talked about a number of times, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Uh, definitely do not you know, jump into these discussions without much of a plan going forward. So it'll be very interesting. I think the Big 12 could be the big beneficiary of this, but uh, it definitely will be a fascinating thing to watch. Um, another big thing that happened throughout this week was the talk around the house settlement and the $20 million in particular, and how are you going to divide that up? Um, no one really knows if it's going to be a 50-50 split between men's and women's, or they're going to allocate it to football mostly and then kind of divide the remainder of whatever it looks like from there. So that's a big problem, and as we talked about for um, for a lot of this week really is June throughout June is one of the most important recruiting times in the entire country. There are tons of big time schedules set for this weekend, for the following weekend, for pretty much every weekend in June. And kids are going to want to know this answer, whether it's, you know, them wanting a certain amount of money or it's them just wanting clarity on what the future of this sport looks like. They're going to want answers to how much is the football team getting? How much are individual players getting? Is it different for freshman to senior? Is it different for playing time versus non-playing time? All of this stuff has to be figured out. And it sounds like none of the coaches really have an idea. And that's going to be a very weird conversation to have with a lot of recruits. But it's definitely one of those things that they're going to have to figure out really quickly. um, Because you can't necessarily let this thing go too long without knowing where all this money is going. Because then you can kind of adapt to the new circumstances of the college sports. And hopefully, if it is all going to football or if it is all going to the revenue-making sports then you have to figure out ways to supplement that in these smaller sports and vice versa. If it goes um, 50-50, then you might be able to find a way to supplement the football and basketball budgets a little bit more. So there's a lot to go on here. Definitely something to watch there. Another thing that coaches in particular were not very happy about is the elimination of walk-ons. We did talk about this earlier in the week. It's one of those things that I fully understand where they're coming from, and I totally understand that roster construction and keeping everyone healthy and going through practice to from spring practice to the starting day and through the season is not easy. There's no two ways about that. But the reality is, I just think it, it opens doors for more kids to go to group of five schools to build up those schools a little bit more, and it makes it so... I I just think there's a little bit more of equity in these sports. I think you have a little bit more ability to um, bump down to smaller uh, sports and give them a little bit more uh, piece of the pie in that scenario. So I fully understand that it's not ideal for football, but I think it could be better for the other sports and for definitely the smaller schools in football for sure. Um, So I think a lot of this stuff is going to be really, really fascinating to watch. One of the weirdest things that came out that doesn't have much to do with football but does give you guys got a kind of an idea of what could happen in the future is some within the SEC are trying to get Duke basketball to come on over to the SEC and join them, but nothing else. They want just Duke basketball and the rest of the athletic department to go to another conference. That is uh, a little crazy, if I'm being totally honest with you, because when you look at it, that sets a precedent where you can kind of just take pieces of the pie. Now, Notre Dame has done this for a little bit with basketball and the ACC, but the reality is this is a very interesting uh, thing that could continue to happen. You know, if you wanted to pick out the Florida State football program, if you wanted to pick out the Georgia football program, in all hypotheticals, of course, but it definitely does open a weird precedent if this were to happen that you can kind of just take pieces of the pie without taking the entire thing, which is a very, very interesting concept, especially when you talk about conference realignment. So it'll be something to watch for sure. Definitely something that will be really, really fascinating. There was also belief that Clemson and Florida State will find their way out of the uh, ACC. So there is a lot of confidence that they'll be out of the ACC. No one really knows where they'll go, where they'll go from there. Uh, Florida State doesn't seem to be very welcome in the, in the SEC. Clemson, the same. So I don't really know what's going on there. I don't know what Clemson is thinking right now. I'm not really sure what Florida State is thinking. But as of right now, it doesn't necessarily look great for those two schools, that's for sure. Um, And also another piece, just kind of an added on piece for conference realignment here, Utah to the ACC is definitely picking up steam. Uh, Utah is the only school that joined the Big Ten that did not sign their 99-year contract. So definitely something that we need to watch very, very closely. It could happen before this year. I I would be a little bit surprised just because of the logistics of it all and everything that would have to happen for that to occur. But 
at the very least, it definitely could happen uh, before 2025. And then who knows? Uh, a lot of different things can happen, especially around the ACC this time. So it'll be fascinating to watch all of this unfold. When you look at these SEC meetings, there's always fun details that come out. There's no two ways about that. There's always coaches talking on things that we really want to know about. There's always very, very interesting tidbits. And I think especially this year with Florida State, Clemson uh, moving around with the SEC kind of being in the center of that, with uh, the house realignment, with Jaden Rashada, with all of the things to talk about, there were definitely a ton of things that came out of last week. And we'll definitely follow the Florida State and Clemson um saga I suppose if you want to call it um, for the next little bit because that is going to be something that is going to be fascinating to watch it's definitely something where Florida State feels like a team where they should be able to kind of decide which which conference they go to and kind of just jump in and, and no problems but it doesn't sound like it's going to be that way so it's going to be really really fascinating to watch that unfold I think when you look at the landscape today there's a lot of questions and a lot of it revolves around What's the SEC going to do with the House settlement? What's the SEC going to do with conference realignment and as well as the Big Ten? So when we look at these two conferences, we're really looking at college football as a whole because they really define a lot of what's go what goes on. So it's a fascinating thing to watch. I think when we look at these SEC meetings, they always have something, right? They always have some rumors. They always have um, something very interesting to unpack. And I think Florida State was definitely number one on my list, so it'll be fascinating to watch that unfold. I think we'll definitely keep you updated with all of the stuff happening over there, but we're going to take our first break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about a question that's kind of been plaguing college football the last little bit, which is, what is good enough to make the playoff in the 12-team playoff? Who knows what's good enough? Is it 9-3? and three? Is it 8-4? and four? Is it 10-2? and two? I have no idea, but let's try to figure that out right after this, so stick with us. <laughs> 